This is a message I really want people to understand, and I think, Shlaimi, you, you could be the first one to say, the UAE didn't really change um, as a place. I think the vision of the leaders have, has always been the same, open, tolerant, welcoming. And living as a Jew before the Abrahamic Accord was, is the same as living as a Jew after the Abrahamic Accord. Okay, and another journey begins. Tel Aviv to Dubai. A lot of good stuff happening there this week. We'll talk about it soon. Good morning from Dubai. I'm at the Dubai Marina running into Chakras, where there's a minion at a hotel. And uh, we're gonna see the community here in the UAE. It's going to be amazing. I'm looking forward and you should be too. Okay, so we finished Chakras, and now we are at Mini Miracles, which is the local-run Jewish community school. And uh, it's, it's honestly hard to believe that there's a Jewish school that's thriving with Jewish kids in the heart of the Arab world. I mean, a couple of years ago, this did not exist. So that's kind of amazing. Let's take a look. Hi kids! Hi guys! Hello! Good, Good morning. morning! Richie, you want to see how it's set? Ready, set, go! <laughs> Amazing! Wow! That was great! Nice job! How many kids are in the school these days? We have 50, about 50. Wow! Okay, so we just saw the younger kids and now we're headed in to what I believe is the older kids, Rabbi Levi Duchman, who is the rabbi here in the UAE, along with his brother, Rabbi Mendel Duchman. They are teaching the class. Take a look. It's a beautiful campus. There's a nice playground here. It's sunny, the weather's nice. Mini Miracles, this is the name of the school. And there in the background, you have the Burj Khalifa, the tallest building in the world. We are going to be visiting there later. And this is Rabbi Mandel Dushman and his class. Yes, no, no, that was a long bit. Can I know how to so cute? Upper, upper third. 
Is that thing you could do? So, so, so but you're not gonna put it straight, you're gonna put a bit slanted Maybe. towards this. Yes. Do you know why we do it sideways? Yeah. Some rabbis say it should be straight, and some people rabbis say it should be horizontal. So it's in the in the, uh, in the middle. But nothing in Judaism usually when there's two rabbis with different opinions. You should put it there like this. We go like one or the other. Like Hanukkah, one rabbi says you like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Another rabbi says eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Yeah. We don't compromise. Yeah. We go according to the rabbi that says one candle, two candles, three candles. Yeah. So why when it comes to the mezuzah do we put it? Sideways, which is in between both, because when it comes to a home, there's compromise. Okay, so uh, yeah, that's a good. That's wow. Good. I heard that the you know the Ashkenazim, you know the Torah, go straight. Right. And uh, uh, no, uh, Sephardim. Because uh, straight. Yes, and and then, uh, and we got yeah, like so, so you do it like this. You have to compromise. compromise. But in children's no compromise. You know right. that. Right over here. Okay, so we're on the way to Abu Dhabi now for the president's visit, and there's a border in between Dubai and Abu Dhabi. Check it out. So I'm in this hotel where the uh, event with the president is taking place. There's somebody out there on the water just jet skiing around. It's the coolest thing. Anyhow, um, Israel's ambassador to the UAE just showed up and people are starting to show up. The event's taking place in about 45 minutes or so and um, we're very excited. What's so important to say is that this is very, very historic. Once again, this community is new and emerging, and a year or two ago, none of this was here. Or most of it wasn't here, you know, it was all happening quietly under the wraps. So to see this so openly, so proudly in a country in the heart of the Arab world, is just very, very exciting and inspiring, honestly. So it's almost three o'clock in the morning. I got back to my hotel recently. It's been a very long day, very exhausting day. I haven't been in a bed in almost 48 hours. So I have to try to get some rest and tomorrow is another big day. See you later. Okay, so we are at Dubai Expo 2020. Basically it's a world exposition that Dubai has been working on for, I think, over 10 years. Could be wrong about that, but I think. Almost every country in the world has a pavilion that represents the country and what the country stands for. And every day at the Expo, a different country has their national day. Today is Israel's day at the Expo. The President of Israel is here. Many members of the Jewish community are here. And supposedly there's gonna be members of the uh, UAE royal family as well. Rabbi, wanna say hi? Hello, how are you? I'm good, how are you? We're very good. What does this day symbolize to you? I think it's a very important day uh, celebrating Israel's National Day here in the UAE. It's special for our community because we've, we've been living here for so many years and the Emiratis have always shown their tolerance and, and respect to the Jewish community and it's amazing to finally have Jewish community members from around the world coming to visit the UAE, Israelis coming to visit the UAE, they get the message of what the UAE is really based on and the foundation of the UAE, so it's a great day. Look at these houses, unbelievable. So I'm currently on the Palm Island, which is, you know those famous islands that you can see from space that are, they look like palm trees from space that was built in Dubai. I'm on one of the islands right now. I'm meeting Rabbi Levi Duchman and we're gonna to go together to the expo. So there's gonna be an event for Israel again tonight. So we're heading over there soon. I'm just waiting for him to be finished with his meeting and we'll be on our way. So I'm in the car with Rabbi Levi Duchman who is the rabbi and has been the rabbi in UAE for what, almost 10 years? Yeah, just about seven years. Well, seven yeah, years. You could say close to 10 years. Okay. And um, we're on the way to Expo, to an event uh, honoring the Israel National Day of Dubai Expo. So like you mentioned, my name is Rabbi Levi Duchman. I was the first rabbi to move to the United Arab Emirates. I am from Brooklyn, New York. That's where I grew up. That's where I was educated. I went to school there. And in Crown Heights, small, nice, nice 
very very nice neighborhood neighborhood and then I went to yeshiva in the UK now during that time my sister married a Moroccan living in Moroccan living in Montreal at that time and they both decided to move on Shlichot, to become the Rebbe's emissary to Morocco it was very interesting for us we never really knew Morocco Muslim country um, and of course we always knew growing up that the first shliach that the Rebbe ever sent to was to Morocco but it was found, realized that Manchester to go home during the vacations was closer to go visit my sister in Morocco than to go to New York. So I started going to visit quite often Morocco and I just enjoyed it, Casablanca, seeing the shluchos and then also seeing this amazing thing of the Jewish community and the Muslim community getting along with each other, living together. It was, it was a phenomenon to know what your sister lives in the same building as other Moroccans that are not Jewish, Moroccan Muslims. This was something which which caught people by surprise. And of course, by me living there and, and being a, a, a from Jew living there and you have access to kosher food, Jewish education. And of course, you have over 500 Sadiqim buried, many famous Sadiqim buried there. It's, you realize that, wow, there's so much potential and and real strong life in the Middle East in in Muslim countries and this is something I would say growing up we weren't exposed to this we didn't really know know know, know about this and this was something very very interesting and of course that 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 created more interest in the general and the other countries in the in North Africa and the Middle East in Tunisia than you would meet then of course, then you would meet different. Then I would meet different Jews passing by, until finally I heard of the United Arab Emirates and the the GCC countries. And I remember my first trip to the UAE was to come visit a few Jews that we that we knew living here. And ever since arriving to the UAE, I just was. I thought it would be a one-time trip. Then I said I'll come again. And what we found here was Jewish expats living here living here with the greatest support of the United Arab Emirates government. Really, the UAE is a place of tolerance, of coexistence, respect. So they were living here just fine and slowly celebrating their Jewish life. There was no rabbis living here at that time. The, there was a, a small minion which would actually change from home to home every week and would struggle to have a minion. And both me enjoying it and of course the real need I ended up coming here more often and then my trips st ended up staying from one week to month to two months and now seven years later I am still still here and of course just two years ago we had the Abrahamic Accord which will speak so much like me how it completely changed everything and today we are are proud to say that when I arrived here if someone would want kosher food, they would have to bring it in their suitcase. If someone would want to use a mikvah, they would have to use the sea, the ocean. And if someone would want to have Jewish education, they would have to do it on Zoom or, or, or telephone. And today we have a beautiful mikvah here in the United Arab Emirates. We have four kosher restaurants, multiple kosher caterings. We have a huge um, Mini Miracles nursery, Talmud Torah. And it's really a growing community where you have everything that you need. And we're just so thankful to the government of the UAE um, for really supporting us. And every single thing that we do here in the country is in partnership with the government, working with the Ministry of Education for our schooling, working for the with the Ministry of Health and food safety for the kosher certification which is actually registered locally as Emirates Agency for Kosher Certification which is which is a great thing and as well of course with our our synagogue both in Abu Dhabi where we have license number 001 the first synagogue in in the country to be licensed and as well as well in Dubai so so this is in very very short uh, um, about myself about the community
are standing here now walking into the world's tallest building go to Khalifa here in Dubai and we are going to the first kosher restaurant restaurant in the United Arab Emirates so let's go okay so I'm here at Armani Kaf we're on the balcony overlooking the fountain and look there's Haimashi the Hasidish eating sitting and enjoying meals here in Dubai how's the food oh delicious ah, the food is oh, delicious amazing really really amazing so we're standing right here in the first kosher restaurant in the United Arab Emirates in Armani Kaf this kosher restaurant has been really the catalyst for all the kosher food here in the UAE. It all began here on the bottom floor of the world's tallest building, the Burj Khalifa. So let's go inside the kitchen and we'll show you. So right over here is really where it all happens. This is the kosher kitchen here in the Burj Khalifa and the world's tallest building. You have hundreds of tourists come here daily to have a luxury kosher dinner in the heart of Dubai, in downtown Dubai, in the Burj Khalifa. Right over here, we have our chef preparing really very high level kosher food. All of the chicken being served here in, from this kitchen all comes from our local kosher shkita, which is takes place in Al Ain which is in Abu Dhabi where we, where, we, where we chef local chickens for production for this kosher restaurant and if you come outside you will see this restaurant can seat up to 150 people and during the high seasons it is impossible it is very difficult even to, 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 get, to get a seat here check this out it's a random night in January in Dubai the place is full of Jewish people eating out look at this Okay, back in the room. Today was a wild day. A lot of time spent at the expo. A lot of time was spent with the community and the rabbis. But one thing that struck me the most was when we went to the restaurant and we walked in there and the place was packed. Pretty much not a seat available in the house. And it just made me think about, you know, the fact that I remember this community, I remember this city when it did not have this many Jews and people lived here quietly. And now there's payas in the streets, there's tzitzes, there's people with the yarmulkes, there's minyanim sometimes in the streets. It's, it's wild. It's wild how popular this place has become with, from Jews. And um, it's, it's quite beautiful to see. It really is. That also brings out the point that it's a real challenge for the people who are managing and running the Jewish community here. Like they really had to scramble and quickly double and triple and you know, quadruple their efforts to make kosher food available, to make mikvah available, to make Jewish school available. As soon as the peace started, couples started moving from Israel and from Europe, from other places, because they got jobs in Dubai and in the rest of the UAE and they wanted to live here and they need a Jewish community to rely on. And for a small team of people to be managing so much work is a very big deal. So they get a lot of credit. And tomorrow we're gonna learn more about the efforts of uh, the rabbis and the community leaders here to keep this beautiful community running. So I'm having lunch here with Rabbi Mendel Duchman, who has been living in UAE for how long? Three years. Three years. And um, Rabbi, tell me, what's it been like when all of a sudden people move here overnight? There were, there were people here before, obviously before the Abraham Accords, but now the place is exploding with growth. And why are so many young families coming to live here in Dubai? Many people are choosing in recent months or past year to move to the UAE. Um, I would say what we know about three, four, five families a week, something like that, um, from all countries. Obviously, the Abraham Accord had a has a very big part in this big influx of Jews, which is amazing. For some reason, totally not true, a myth that uh, before that Jews weren't able to live here comfortably, but the uh, Hashem. Maybe before Abraham Accords, Jews were very happy over here, but I guess there's a certain uh, 
certain confidence when it comes that there's flights to Israel, a few a week, very for the Israelis, it's easy to travel and commute between here and Israel, so people could still keep their jobs back in Israel, or people want to expand their business to the Middle East, or Africa, Asia, it's a perfect spot to be. So, uh, yeah, so since then we already built our mikvah, and uh, our Hebrew school grew uh, two, three hundred times. Uh, we opened a nursery since. Um, we had one restaurant before. Now we have four restaurants with uh, catering, and uh, so there's Baruch a lot of growth, and uh, we're very happy about that. Tell me a little bit about the early days, when you arrived. So first of all, Shalom, it's, if you think about it, it's pretty amazing to to be drinking a coffee after Honor Shrey the Shadr with Chalav Yisrael milk that was just produced yesterday in, in Fujairah in the United Arab Emirates. Really, um, of course, the <laughs> when we met each other first in, in Starbucks way back then in City Walk, I don't think we imagined we'll be sitting by a minion after a minion with 47 people and with just Chalav Yisrael milk so a lot changed as you see a lot of good changes happened if you look at the early days of the UAE and this is a message I really want people to understand and I think Shlaimi you, you could be the first one to say the UAE didn't really change um, as a place I think the vision of the leaders have has always been the same open tolerant welcoming and living as a Jew before the Abrahamic Accord was is the same as living as a Jew after the Abrahamic Accord. I really feel, and I told you this the other day when we were going to the expo, that this change is a lot also on the perspective of the Jewish people on the Middle East. And you've been doing a fantastic job really showing the Jewish world, showing the firm world the way the Arabs in the Middle East, the way the Middle East is our friends, and they're not not against us. And on the contrary, I'm sure you've been to many Kivrit Sadiqim in, in countries where people would, would never think of going, and you had amazing experiences. I think I don't think anyone ever got in your way, or if they did, you're still here. So it obviously wasn't so bad. Right, but I mean, let's just be, for all the people watching, we have to keep in mind that there are, unfortunately, like in every part of the world, there are some bad people. And I wouldn't want to minimize that, but here in the Gulf specifically, it's extremely, extremely safe and the people are very, very welcoming to Jews. Of course, there's bad people. And if you think about it, there's also people, unfortunately, in our communities, which just they have the stereotype, oh, someone's Muslim, someone's not like them. They're bad. They're anti-Semite. They're like so. But I think um, I know, overall, I think we're we're really, really heading in, in, in the right direction now. For me, why it's so important, our community here in, in the UAE and really all of the activities we're doing throughout the Gulf is to give this opportunity to be a Arla Gaim, to a light on the nations. Because, you know, many people in the Gulf, they don't know about Judaism. They don't know. I'm sure. How many people did you meet in the Gulf that you were the first Jew that they met? Hundreds. Thank you. So, so the fact that we could bring up a new generation here, we have kids coming to our nursery, to our Talmud Torah, and we could educate them, and each one of them become ambassadors. So I really, really believe, and it's not just a belief, I see from the past seven years, how we're growing and the Middle East is slowly changing. I have friends that were Pakistanis that lived here that first got to know the community, then they got to know more people, more people on our team, more rabbis. And today, it's not a question in my mind that when they go back to Pakistan and they tell their family about the Jews and they tell their family about, it brings positivity. And it's like the rabbi always says, the way you fight darkness is with light and you fight violence with light. And this is really what we're, what we're, what we're doing here in the UAE. Hey everybody, so thrilled, but I gotta tell you, there's so much more going on. You need to download that Meaningful Minute app right away, ASAP. You gotta do this, Schnell. There's an entire world in that Meaningful Minute app that's gonna bring you closer to the Abishta. So please, right now, get that app, download it, and really enjoy becoming so much closer to Hashem. This is the JCC, which was uh, this is the community center. Here you have all the royals, 
This is Sheikh Zayed Al Nahyan. He founded the country of the UAE. This is his older son, Sheikh Khalifa, who is the official ruler of UAE. This is Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed, who is the crown prince of the UAE. This is Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid, who is the ruler of Dubai. And this is Sheikh Hamdan bin Mohammed, who is the crown prince of Dubai. This is the shul, the synagogue at JCC. This was the first public synagogue in Dubai, meaning that after the peace deal, after the Abraham Accords, um, this was the first shul that opened publicly, proudly, here in the UAE. And what's interesting is that they have here a prayer that they say, for the welfare of the government and the UAE military forces. They read this every prayer every week on Shabbos by Kriya Satoira. And here is the actual prayer. So we have the prayer is in Hebrew, in Arabic, and in English. So I am at a I'm at a residential building in Dubai and I'm going to visit Mr. Sally Wolf, who is the president of the JCC of the Jewish community in Dubai. And we're going to talk to him a little bit about Jewish life over here. That's how you know it's the right house. Hi. What's up, man? Yes. How are you? Great. This is Mr. Sally Wolf the president of the JCC here in Dubai. How are you doing? Very fine. Well, it's nice to see you. Likewise. Nice to see you in Dubai. You came for a special occasion. Came to see you. Ah, only to me. No, I thought you come for the president as well. You are the president. <laughs> no, the president of Israel. Him too, but the main thing is yeah. to see you, Sally. How... First of all, I want to tell you, you, you have a very nice house. Thank you. Okay, so I wanted to ask you a little bit about yourself, where you're from, what your uh, childhood was like, where did you grow up, etc. I was born in Israel, and when I was 13, after the Bar Mitzvah, my parents sent me to England to boarding school, and I stayed there till uh, 1968. 1968, I came back to Israel. I was three years in the military. And then 1971, I came back to London. And I stayed in London for 25 years. I was in the jewelry business. And then eventually, I moved to Germany in 1985. I was there for 15 years. In 2001, I came to Dubai. And okay, so um, what happened when you moved to Germany? Were you still in the jewelry business? You went into a different business? No, in, the, in Germany I was in the textile business. In this business I had a shop in Munich. And there I met all the Emiratis who used to come for holiday or for medical treatments. And uh, that's uh, how I came to Dubai. They invited me to Abu Dhabi, to Dubai, and eventually I came and settled here. Now, my understanding is that because you have such a special relationship with uh, the royal family and the important people here, they nominated you to be the president of the JCC of the Jewish community. Is that correct? That's correct. Yeah. So, what's it been like since the peace agreement? Um, how is it? How are you enjoying being the president of the community? And what's it like seeing this this uh, community blossom into something big and beautiful? Well, it is a very interesting uh, task. A lot of people coming and calling, especially from Israel, business people, so many religious people. Everybody want to know some information about what's happening here in the United Arab Emirates. This I'm talking about before the peace. Um, we have a community here that we had to build it up from scratch. There were hardly any minions here before. And then we are having now at the moment, we are having four places in Dubai that we can pray. And we have one in Abu Dhabi. And we have also a mikveh here since a few months ago. We have uh, four kosher restaurants here. 
we have um, places where we can go and enjoy without having the fear of wearing a kippah or wearing with seats a uh, pious in the street or like before they used to tell you I'm sorry can you take off the kippah it's from for your own security but now they are used to it and people going even with tribal well, this is with President Khalifa but this picture was taken around 11 years ago in Abu Dhabi right I met him on a couple of occasions and uh, This picture is uh, with Muhammad bin Rashid, the ruler of Dubai, in the middle of Sheikh Nahyan, yeah, so the Minister of Tolerance. I met Sheikh Nahyan two days ago, and also Sheikh Muhammad bin Rashid came to Expo. To I, was, Expo yeah. I was standing there, and as he passed me, he, he nodded to me, which wow. I thought was very special, and clearly he did it because I'm Jewish, because no one else got that, so it was, it was really very no, special. No, he's a, Sheikh Nahyan is a very special... Sheikh, you have me a lot of pictures of Sheikh Nakhyan? Yeah, I see Sheikh Nakhyan is all over. Sheikh Nakhyan, uh, Sheikh Muhammad bin Zayed. Yeah, He's the ruler Another of this country right now. Sheikh Muhammad bin Zayed mm -hmm. here. This is Benazir Bhutto, he used to be the, pres the Prime Minister of Pakistan. Really? This is with King Hussein of Jordan. This is another with Sheikh Muhammad bin Zayed. Wow. So let me ask you this. What do you think we can look forward to for the future of the Jewish community here? Do you think uh, things are going to grow and get bigger? Every week the community is thriving. People from all around the world are coming, especially from France. They're coming to United Arab Emirates with the children. And uh, I believe that within five, six years, there's going to be at least 10,000 Jewish people living here. Wow, that's a very bold prediction, but it is, uh, well, I, I think the we, numbers support the I, I your, believe your now we are around four, between four and 5,000 wow. in United Arab Emirates. And how, what was the number two years ago? 1,500. So it's more than doubled, possibly even sure. tripled since then. Don't forget there was a, in the last uh, year since we signed the agreement, the Abrahamic Accord, there were at least 300,000 Israelis here visiting. visiting the country. Due to the COVID, it was a little bit in a problem, but otherwise, it would have been here already 700,000. Wow. Wow, that's unbelievable. Is it Geschmack to be a Yid in the UAE? Yeah, listen, I never, think, I never thought that I could eat a filter fish here and have proper matzahs and all the things for Pesach and for all the other holidays and you, you couldn't have this before but you have now. That's amazing. So glad to hear. Thank you for all your service that you do for the community. You're welcome. And you should have a happy, healthy, long life and we look forward to seeing you again very soon. I hope. Did you visit our Mary Miracles, the kindergarten? Yes, I did. It was a beautiful it's experience. A, it's, this is the future. Right. This is the future. We are trying to build up now a school, a high school for the children of above 10 years of age. Wow. And uh, because we can see that it's a potential place for Jewish people in the future to come here, to do business, to study and to live in a harmony and safely. Okay, sounds great. And keep up your amazing work. Thank you very much and uh, see you in Jerusalem. See you in Dubai. In Dubai. <laughs> Unlike many other places around the world, Dubai does not have an ancient Jewish community. However, they are building everything a Jewish community needs, including all of the infrastructure, from scratch. If you ask me, I think it's inspiring to see Jewish life thriving in the heart of the Arab world, once again proving the endurance of a Jew.